So I want to dive into using Corona Render with you guys for a little bit because I think it's probably one of the better CPU rendering engines that I've ever used. Um, definitely a much faster rendering engine than something that I've used in like Vue. Of course the computations that are occurring are completely different but you can get similar results with just a little bit of trickery. So um, I have Cinema 4D already open so let's just go ahead and open up the scene that I made. So it will be this distance shader one. And the reason why I wanted to do a video on Corona Render is because I, there are certain reasons that you might want to use a CPU rendering engine over a GPU rendering engine. And that's specifically if you need to use like a lot of different um, like scatters or things that require large amounts of memory because the, the main limitation to a GPU rendering engine is uh, obviously the GPU you're using depending on how fast, how strong, how powerful that card is but also the memory and the memory is probably the biggest issue that I often run into with GPU rendering. There are many reasons why I would choose to use a GPU rendering engine over a CPU rendering engine but in some instances you might not have an option for that uh, and there's a lot of uh, other trickery things that you can do to um, optimize your renderings uh, or your scenes to take full advantage of GPU rendering while having tons of different uh, scatters or objects or high-res textures there, there's a lot of things you can do but sometimes you don't have that option um, and the reason why I chose Corona engine uh, Corona render is because they actually have a fairly decent um, uh, uh, price uh, policy or, or uh, price campaign that they have it's extremely cheap monthly um, and it's it's better even if you pay yearly um, and it's a very fast CPU path tracing engine and you can get real-time results in as almost not nearly as quick as GPU rendering but pretty dang close so uh, one thing I want to do first real quick is I'm just gonna disable the uh, the surface spread I have here oh and the topic of the video is also going to be on the distance shader for Corona um, and it's a very powerful shader I have two scenes set up to take advantage of it and I'll show you exactly how they're used um, this scene is actually giving me issues and it has nothing to do with Corona it has everything to do with Cinema 4D so I'm actually gonna remove the maples that I have here um, I'm also gonna get rid of these and what I'm going to do is Apparently, they still think they're being used. It's probably because I have them there. Yeah. So let's get rid of that. Um, the distance shader can be used in almost anything that I have played with so far. You can use it in the cloner. Um, you can use it in surface spread. I haven't used it in um, the Forester's option. That's because I actually can't get Forester to work right now. It randomly removed itself from my installation. Hold on, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it randomly removed itself. Um, I removed all remnants of it from my computer, re-downloaded it from Forrester's website, um, installed everything back into my plugins folder, and it's still nowhere to be found. It's nowhere in my extensions, um, and I don't know where it went. So I can't use Forrester right now. So I'm just using uh, Laubworks, uh, or Laubworks, if, uh, if they still pronounce their W's as V's. And... Um, I'm using Surface Spread and their their plant um, database here. So um, I own both. I liked Forrester because it had a lot more plants that came with it pre-installed um, that I could use for like grasses and whatnot. But Laubwerk will work just fine. Their plant models are exceptional, so I don't really mind. Um, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in some simple stuff here. So I'm gonna throw in. Um, we'll just do something simple like cylinders. That way I can, you know, we can scatter a bunch of cylinders around and um, it'll look, it'll be easier to visualize and it won't be as hard on my computer and it shouldn't be hard anyways, but it's just this one scene for some reason. Um, no other scene I've ever played with had these problems. It's just this one in particular for some reason. Um, so let's go ahead and duplicate the cylinder and we'll put one under the cloner and one under the surface spread and we will re we'll turn the surface spread off for the time being and now the way the distance shader works 
is it's kind of like an uh, ambient occlusion shader, but it works real time at the time of rendering, and it does a few other things differently. Um, but the main thing you can do with it is that you can uh, use it to tell objects how far away they are from whatever it is that you're using as an object to stay away from. So in this case, we have a bunch of cylinders being um, populated across the corner, but you'll see right here, we have a big barren spot, and that's because that's where the sphere is. And if I unhide that sphere, you can see it right here. And as we move the sphere around, the cloners get populated in and out based on a certain distance of that sphere that I have set. So the way you set that up is in the cloner, <coughs> um, this is just uh, C4D's uh, cloning object here. That's nothing particularly important. Um, but I have it set up how you normally would, so I have it set to objects because we're cloning a bunch of objects around. Um, and I have the clones set to random, just so they're randomly spattered around. Um, and then I have them set to render instance. Multi-instance does appears to not really work um, if you are trying to use um, the distance shader to kind of visualize what you need. So um, it doesn't seem to work in that regard. So I use the render instances. That way I still, I mean, I'm getting some decent performance in the viewport but I can also visualize where things need to be so I can visualize what's happening here so that's the reason why I have it set to render instance if anybody knows a way to resolve that uh, or maybe if it's something that can be applied in a future update of Corona that'd be cool but for the time being that's that's what you have to use as render instance from what I can tell um, and then surface I have it set to the distribution set to surface um, that's about it so the next part is, is that we need a, an effector and you'll see here I have two I have the uh, random effector right here <coughs> and this is just to give it a random rotation which won't matter with the cylinders so we can actually turn that off but we can turn on the scaling and we can use just a uniform scaling we'll put like 0.5 in there and you'll see that it randomizes the scaling <clears throat> and then uh, the other one that I have in there is the shader. Now this shader right here is important because you need to have um, something to tell Corona to work with. So if you go to MoGraph Effector and put Shader, you can actually use a Cinema 4D shader as an effector. And in this case, it's going to be the distance right here. And this is the, if you go to Plugins Corona uh, Distance, that's what this is. So the distance shader very much works on a um, <coughs> a uh, scene size value. So if your scene size is, you know, let's say I was working, you'll, you'll see this in another example, but the um, size of mountains, if you want clouds to modulate against the mountains, the, the size that you set here for the near and far distances is extremely important. So I got to turn the heater off. So if you want far, if you want, in this case, objects to, to populate further away from a specific object, in our case, the sphere, which, I mean, I can show you, it's, it's doing its job here as well if you unhide it, um, just so you guys can see, see? If you want it to, if you want these objects, right, the, like these um, cylinders to populate so far away from the object, you have to set it in the distance shader for the near and far. So near and far. So obviously if you want things to populate closer, you change the near. So in this case we get 10. But you'll you also notice something else here as I change this. We do have them, you have like a really small one right here that you can see, hopefully. Um, and you can see that the closer they are with a further distance here, they actually change in scale. Um, and that might be what you want because, and, and like here you can see, kind of got like um, bars, like cellular bars there. Um, they are populating closer to the object that we want it to stay away from, but they are lower scale, and that's because this is just a map. It's a black and white grayscale map. So if you want to have them all uniform scale except for the randomization that you have, you have to change the far distance to the same value. That way you get rid of any um, gray value in the map which won't really update here you're not going to get much of an update here so I wouldn't rely on this visual representation you're just going to have to play with the numbers and know what you're working with um, but now you can see here other than the randomizer that we have which we can actually turn off they are all uniform 
and if we move the sphere they still populate and unpopulate based on that distance. So this is really useful if you need uh, plants to not populate around certain rocks um, or uh, like a wall or a building or anything like that. This is a good way to do that. So to change the specific distance, all you do is you change the near and far values here and then they won't populate around that sphere. The near color and far color don't really matter here. I had to invert these for it to work, so um, I think the near color was black and the far color was white, and I had to invert them. So if I were to change this black and change this white, you'll see that it's doing the exact opposite, where they're growing in closer based on this distance. So if I were to do 20 here, they're starting to grow out further away. Um, the actual far distance here doesn't even really matter too much, um, uh, but you'll start getting the same... Uh, kind of effect but the inverse where the far values here you'll get plants growing at that far value but they're going to be smaller towards the edges so if you want them all to be uniform you just change them all to be the same so that's the invert of that and I believe by default the near color was white and the far color was black um, or the, the near color was black and the far color was white uh, and that's what we ended up with. So, and now we have such great values here. Uh, we have to reduce that. So let's do, let's go back to 10. There we go. All right. So if you, if you find that you're not getting the right kind of value uh, or the right kind of um, distance from your object that you have set up, make sure that you have the distance shader set up properly with the far, near and far color. And you just have to think of it as a mask. So obviously if you want things to be, uh, if you want objects to populate closer um, or further away from the object like in this case you're going to want black color because where the, the black color is there's going to be no population where the white color is there's going to be lots of population so obviously it's just it's just a basic mask uh, in this specific case you don't have to have an inside color and I actually haven't played with that so I'm not going to exactly play with that here either and tell you what it is. I'm just going to have to play with it a little bit more. Um, but then the next thing you have to do is you have to tell the distance sh shader what you want to uh, be the object to provide distance from. And in this case, you just drag in the sphere down into here. It's already in here, so it's not going to work. Uh, but you just grab the object you want and then plop it in here. And you can do it for like maybe the plane. Uh, we don't need the plane in there, so we'll just delete that. Or you can use this arrow right here and you can select what you want in there um, and again we don't need the plane so everything is being uh, everything is staying away from the, the the sphere in this case and that's what we wanted now you can do that with other things like a spline um, you can add a spline in here a curve or whatever and then uh, put in something like a loft or whatever gives it geometry and then you can use that to create like a path where the plants are growing away from the path uh, instead of on it and then you don't have to go in there and mask it all out so there's a lot of procedural stuff you can do with it and that's uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it that way uh, in this case I didn't because it was a very simple setup and you can do it with anything so any object you can do it with um, you can even do it with um, uh, you can do it with uh, a, a, a landscape for instance if you wanted so it's it's all up to you so the next thing that uh, you can play around with um, regarding the distance shader is cloud modulation um, and if you were if you are a part of the discord you'll see that that's what I was playing with the other day so this is just a regular landscape made inside cinema 4d with the landscape object nothing specifically spectacular but it, it did the job so let's go ahead and turn on the VFB or not the VFB but the interactive render and anytime you're working with volumetrics things will be a little bit slower so um, in this case, Corona is a CPU renderer, but it is extremely fast still. Um, you can see here, like even this is a fast uh, interactive render here. But you can also tell right here we have like this cloud that's being modulated over the landscape. So you can do cloud modulation here. And all I did is I added a cube. And if I were to turn this off real quick, we'll do a final render so you can see the final output of it. Um, but all it is is a cube, which right here, um, let's make a camera right there. And then that way we can move around and we can go back to where we need. So this cube, all it does, you can see the distance shader being applied. 
um, but you don't have to worry about that, is <coughs> the holding object for our clouds or our fog or whatever. And that is applied a volume material, just one material that I made, this volume material. And inside the volume material, you can see the values I have here. This is a smaller landscape. It's only six meters by six meters. <clears throat> but I was playing around with this at 5,000 by 5,000 meters. So you can do quite a few things with this. Um, you have to tweak values quite a bit inside of the distance shader and your volumes to get it to look right. Um, but you can do this with larger landscapes and it looks uh, it looks pretty good. I'll show you the examples that I made with the larger landscapes in the Discord. Um, but for the time being, let's talk about this. So in the volume material, in the absorption, <coughs> we add the distance shader. And inside the distance shader, we have it set up with the near and far distance that we need. Um, and then for the distance scale, you can input a noise to uh, provide like a texture or a uh, a, s a different look to your fog or your clouds that way it's not just a linear fog system you can actually have it turbulized or whatever and it provides a pretty good looking um, a pretty good looking uh, shape to your fog uh, and you can use any of the built-in noises that C4D has and it has a lot of them they're all pretty good so um, I'm actually going to increase this to 10 and see if that makes a little bit of a difference and then um, I played with the brightness and contrast a bit. I found that just increasing the contrast to about 60% gave me what I needed for this particular scene. Um, you're going to have to play with all these values um, and the global scale, for instance, at your own pace for your own scene and things like that. So uh, you can't take the values I have here and use them um, one for one. You're gonna, and you might be able to if you are trying to copy uh, what I have with the same sizes and whatnot, but. If you have a scene that is larger or smaller, you're going to have to play around with it. Uh, same thing with the near and far distances. This is what I found that I thought looked good for this particular scene, but you can play around with these and uh, get a completely different look. Um, so what I have here is the distance shader is set up the exact same way, except in this case, the uh, now I think the near color and far color I had to reverse. I can't remember. Um, but this is what I was using that way the clouds grow on top of the landscape and then on this or not grow But they form on top of the landscape and in this case I have it set to uh, Block from the distances set for the landscape in the plane and all I did is I dragged the landscape in there and my plane in there that way the clouds uh, Stay away from the plane as well when they come down and over the top the plane uh, Sometimes really crazy values for the noise will push them below the plane um, but you're going to get that kind of effect regardless of <coughs> um, uh, regardless of uh, what's being blocked. Like you'll, I get the same thing in Ember effects or Ember Gen. Sorry, Ember Gen. So doesn't really matter. Uh, you're all, you, anytime that you have too stark of values, they're going to be pushed below the limit. So, um, but that's what I have set up in here. It's super easy. Um, Let's go ahead and move back to this camera and let's do a quick render. I have Corona set up here, yep. And let's render this out. And you'll see Corona is actually a pretty decent and fast rendering engine. Um, it does a pre-pass like most render engines. This is the first pass right here. And I have it set to five samples, which is kind of low compared to what I'm used to using in uh, GPU rendering, which you know I can use upwards of like 30,000 mega samples. In this case, I'm only using five. Um, and this first pass tends to take a little bit longer, um, but then every subsequent pass after that, the first two or three uh, passes usually don't take as long. But as you get higher and higher and higher, um, the longer those passes take, just because there's more detail that it has to render. Uh, but you can see here, even with this. Uh, this will take maybe another minute before I before it will completely clear out the grain and then uh, the black grain and then it will start focusing on the details. Uh, but you can see the clouds are being wisped over the top of the peaks here and gr and forming down in the valleys and on the top surfaces here and it's being uh, the distance from the plane here is being respected. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a minute and when this is done passing we get enough detail to really show you what's happening. I'll go ahead and start it back up again. 
Okay. So we're about two minutes into the render and we already have a pretty good looking scene here. We do have a lot of noise in the volume, uh, but given more time, more passes, that'll go away. Corona also has a really good built-in um, denoiser, so uh, a really good high quality denoiser built in so you don't really have to worry too much about having to pass or throw more passes at it. You can use the denoiser and that does a pretty good job. Um, but until that's complete, you can kind of see here we have the volume being applied to our landscape appropriately and it kind of even wisps up and over right here or the top of this peak um, and it respects the valleys and the crevices and all that fun stuff so you can play around with your own volumes to get the look you need um, you can also use this as a way to make ventricular clouds or the top of your landscape so if you needed to you could apply maybe a um, another landscape you can copy your landscape but apply it uh, over the top of this I'll just kind of show you I wanted this to render out a little bit more but I'll just show you <clears throat> so let's hide this cube for the time being so what I'm talking about is if you wanted to make something more like ventricular clouds you could take this uh, landscape copy it push it above your your current landscape the one that you want to use and kind of about like maybe right here and then um, you you would have to remove the polygons around the edges here and make this more spherical but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to show you what you can do and instead of using the first landscape your main landscape as the distance object you would remove that and then apply the new landscape and then uh, let's go ahead and kind of see what we have going on there. We'll use the live interactive render. Uh, we also need to uh, hide this. There we go. Um, and then we need to move our cube so that it's... Let's actually stop this so we can see what's happening here I gotta figure this out this is me working on the fly because I actually haven't uh, done it this way so just make sure that it's covering the landscape that we want to be enveloped in the um, the fog and let's go ahead and start that now got to keep the cube on I had it turned off we got to keep the cube on as well okay there we go now we got um, the clouds growing above and this is why you want to create more of a uh, round landscape with the the specific geometry cut off from the edges because if you don't you're gonna get a harsh edge so let's go ahead and hide that <clears throat> and that should give us the look we need there we go and now you have uh, ventricular clouds growing over the top of your landscape um, you can increase the uh, the total uh, density of the clouds to get a better look if you needed to so that they're more dense um, but now it will respect the size of the landscape that you had here and since it's the same landscape it'll respect the shape as well we could even maybe push this down oh, not the scale that there we go push that down there you go and now we have the ventricular clouds so um, and if you haven't seen what ventricular clouds are I might have spelled that wrong <laughs> yeah or lent it I've been saying ven sorry lenticular uh, I just barely woke up so uh, but these are lenticular clouds they they can grow in weird shapes above mountains um, but oftentimes they take the shape of mountains as well as you can see here um, and what that's I, I couldn't give you the exact science I have to learn them as a I have to learn what they are as a pilot um, but it has a lot to do with like the cold and hot air from the surface pushing the clouds up to the uh, base layer of the the, the air forming together um, and then they just form around the landscape so you can do a lot of cool stuff like that um, using this method 
and like right there so and obviously they can be extremely layered like that or they can be you know a single layer or two layers or whatever um, this one's really cool so uh, it's just kind of up to you on what you want to do but that is a good way to do it is using that distance shader so um, and then you'll just want to um, and I actually might make a video on how to do uh, lenticular clouds um, using this method so uh, but that's a good way you can start is by doing it this way so uh, let's go ahead and turn off the cube here that way you can see just how fast the interactive render is for Corona it is still pretty quick it's not as fluid as Octane but it's also not as fast as Octane um, but it is still extremely powerful extremely fast um, and obviously the better your CPU, the, the faster it will render out. And that's just the interactive render. Um, and that's even at details set to 100. So you can get, depending on whether things work in the IR, um, you can actually get final render results with details set to 100 because they'll just render everything out. Our, uh, Corona also has a really good uh, daytime system. Um, as you can see here, I'm using just a sky and a sun. They have a very physically, extremely physically accurate uh, shader model um, but you can use simple colors a physical sky or a shader here and then you can choose what sky model you want they have like your basic hosec wilkie which is what I would normally use in um, octane but I feel the improved one in corona is far more accurate than the hosec wilkie um, and then you can play around with all the other things this is not necessarily a tutorial on how to use the day system, the day night system inside of uh, Corona, but you do have those options and it looks really good. So, um, additionally, uh, what you can do with the uh, distance shader, which I actually did not make a video for, is you can use it as an AO map and you can use it to put dust or rust or uh, sand or foam or anything like that along the edges of your object. So, if you have like an ocean, you can. Uh, use it as a way to put foam along the edge of your like shoreline so lots of cool different things and they actually have that documented in uh, their own uh, distance shader documentation but I will go into more detail on the distance shader in future videos I like it I'm gonna be using Corona render quite a bit so um, let me go ahead and show you it's the same landscape but let me go ahead and show you what um, I made the other day so this was the original, that's the one I rendered out with this exact landscape. The one below it is the exact same landscape as well, but this one is a finished render. You can see how the fog is being pushed up the sides of the mountain. This was me just testing it out. And then this is what I made uh, in the interactive render, and you can see here I let it render out for just a little bit. It didn't take too long, I think this was like two minutes or something like that. Um, and you can get some really dense clouds to being pushed across your landscape. Um, this one probably isn't too practical but at least you have the option to do it and you can get nice fluffy clouds like this um, this is probably what I would use if I was to make um, like a cloud coverage in the sky um, but again it's it's all up to what you want to do and uh, this was using the gas the gaseous the gaseous the, the gaseous or whatever you want to call it um, noise pattern inside of cinema 40 so uh, and this one was the, <laughs> the regular um, noise I think or or wavy turbulence is what this is so uh, this was also made in Corona this was this is uh, Europa I made this yesterday as well um, you can see here inside of Corona you can use the volume material to create atmospheres and um, it's super easy I will make a video on how to do that as well um, in the future but for the time being, uh, this was not used with the distance, so I'm, I'm going on a tangent here, and I shouldn't be doing that. Uh, that is the end of this video, actually, so um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, concerns, or anything you want to add in for future videos, please do so. I really like Corona Render. I recommend people going out and trying it. They do have a trial period that you or a demo uh, that you can play with, but what I like the most about Corona is it's a fast CPU rendering engine. It's the fastest that I've played with. Uh, V-Ray's probably uh, up there as well, but this one I've liked the most, um, and it's priced perfectly. Um, it's not super expensive. It won't break the, the bank. So 
uh, I recommend at least playing around with it and giving it a try. And then if you have any questions about it, go ahead and let me know. Uh, join the Discord. I will put a link for the Discord in the video. Um, we do have a Corona, uh, uh, <laughs> Corona chat here. I haven't posted anything in it because um, a lot of these uh, we do talk in and we, we uh, and some of them we haven't talked in in a bit because people will mostly talk about Gaia. Um, but the Discord is not just purely Gaia related. I mean, obviously I have all of these options in here because I want as much communication as possible. So uh, go ahead and join in, uh, join up. It, you don't have to, there's no obligation. Uh, all you have to do is just read the rules. Um, I recently updated the rules to include absolutely no talk about anything regarding politics because um, there was a guy who was trying to do that and I had to say no because that's a big no. Uh, he brought up a lot of things um, and I couldn't quite pin what he was trying to do but he brought up pretty much everything that I don't want to talk about especially in a 3D, um, a 3D form. So um, new rules, but other than that, the rules aren't, uh, there's a lot of words here, but that's because I just didn't lay them out one by one, but a lot of it is just, you know, don't post porn, don't be an asshole, don't talk about politics or religion, uh, keep it 3D related, and just be nice. That's essentially what this comes out to be. Other than that, um, you can go ahead and join up and talk about pretty much whatever you want, and, uh, as long as it's following the guidelines and keeping it mostly 3D related, and I will see you guys in the next video.